Hello everyone. Welcome back. This is the fourth lecture on the impact of jet on veins. In this lecture, we will discuss further applications of the impact of jet on moving curved veins. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to apply impulse momentum principle to analyze the work done by a jet on a series of curved veins mounted on a wheel and to calculate the efficiency of the jet. Accordingly, in this lecture we will discuss how can we apply the impulse momentum principle to calculate the work done by a jet or calculate the impact of a jet if there are a series of veins mounted on a wheel and if this jet is allowed to impinge the veins which are mounted on a wheel and how do we calculate the work done uh, in that case and how do we calculate the efficiency of the jet in this case. When we quickly recollect what we have discussed in the previous lecture, we have seen that if a jet is impinging on a curved vein and if the vein is moving with a velocity u along the same direction as that of the jet velocity v, the impact of the jet is given by along the x direction fx is equal to rho a into v minus u whole square into 1 plus cos theta and force along the y direction fy is equal to 0. And the corresponding work done for unit time or the power developed by the jet is given by along the x direction wx is equal to rho a into v minus u whole square into 1 plus cos theta into u and the efficiency is given by 2u into v minus u whole square into 1 plus cos theta divided by v q. For that case we have also seen that the efficiency is maximum when the velocity of the jet is 3 times the velocity of the vein or velocity of the vein is one third of the velocity of the jet which gives us the maximum efficiency as 8 by 27 into 1 plus cos theta. And this efficiency is maximum when theta is equal to 0 that is cos theta equal to 1 and the maximum value of efficiency that can be attained in this case is limited to 59.2 percent which is a small value or which is relatively less compared to the practical application. How can we increase this efficiency? What is the next option? Here whatever possible we have done, we have adjusted the velocity of the vein, we have adjusted the vein angle, everything is done. Now how can we increase this efficiency? That is possible if instead of a single jet we can arrange a series of curved vein. Uh, how can we do that a series of curved vein? This can be mounted on a wheel. Also another practical difficulty in this case is if you have a vein which is moving in the horizontal direction or along the direction of the jet, every time this jet has to travel an additional distance to meet the vein. Initially the vein was here and jet was able to meet the vein here. When jet moves into a new position, the so when the vein moves into a new position, the jet has to travel this additional distance to meet the vein and this continues which means that we need to have a jet which increases its length continuously to meet the vein which is practically not possible at all. We cannot have a jet which keep on increasing its length. So we have to find a solution to that. We do not want the jet to travel the additional distance. Again a solution to that is let us have a series of curved vein mounted on a wheel that is this is the case what I am talking about. The advantage here is that when this jet comes and strikes this vein, this particular vein that I am talking about, when the jet strikes this vein, it moves, it moves with a velocity u and it reaches a new position. When this vein moves to a new position, the jet need not travel this additional distance to meet the vein here. Instead, this vein which was after this, it comes to this position. This vein moves to this position and the jet can meet the vein at the same position where it had met the first vein. Which means that the jet need not travel the additional distance jet need to travel only till this point 
and as this wheel rotates it makes sure that there is one wheel in front of the jet at this point always. So, jet need not travel the additional distance and the wheels can keep on moving. That is the advantage if you arrange a series of curved vein mounted on a wheel. In this case also the jet hits the veins at its center. You can see the jet is hitting the vein at its center and this vein or this series of veins mounted on the wheel or I can say the wheel rotates in this direction with an angular velocity omega and this velocity has a tangential component and the tangential component of the velocity of the wheel is represented as u. Since that is a tangential component that is also in the horizontal direction which means that this tangential component of the velocity u and velocity of the jet v are in the same direction. Now this is reduced to a case a jet of vein hits a jet of uh, fluid hits a vein at its center and velocity of the jet and the tangential velocity of the vein are in the same direction. However, this case is slightly different from the case of a single moving vein such that here the jet did not travel the additional distance to meet the vein. Always there is one vein in front of the jet. Jet is always meeting the vein here. It does not have to travel the additional distance. If the jet need not have to travel the additional distance to meet the vein, what is the mass flow rate that is striking the vein or what is the mass that is striking the vein per unit time? We have seen in the case of single moving vein, it is rho a into relative velocity, but that is because the jet has to travel an additional distance. But in this case, since the jet need not have to travel the additional distance, the mass flow rate is not rho a into v minus u, instead it is rho a v itself. Whatever mass is coming from the nozzle, the entire mass is assumed to be striking the vein at this point as in the case of a stationary vein. So, the mass flow rate in this case is rho a into v that is a very important difference which is to be taken care of. Let me repeat when a jet of water is striking a series of curved vein mounted on a wheel the mass flow rate that is mass striking the vein per unit time is rho a into v. But in this case the velocity of the jet is v and the tangential component of the velocity of the wheel that is u and this v and u are in the same direction. Therefore, the velocity with which the jet is striking the vein is the relative velocity. So, in this case v and u are in the same direction and the relative velocity v r is given by v minus u. So, v minus u is the relative velocity with which this jet is striking the vein. And also after this uh, after this the jet gets deflected through an angle 180 minus theta. Initially the jet was coming in this direction, it gets deflected into this direction where the deflection angle is 180 minus theta where theta is the vein angle. Assuming the vein to be smooth and frictionless, if v r is the velocity with which or v r is the relative velocity with which the jet is impinging on the vein, the outgoing jet comes out with the same velocity v r. However, that is inclined at an angle theta to the x direction. Therefore, this v r can be resolved into components along the x and y direction. So, here the x component is v r cos theta along the negative x direction and v r sin theta along the positive y direction. Similarly, for this jet x component is v r cos theta along the negative x direction and v r sin theta along the negative y direction. As explained in all the previous cases x direction is taken as the uh, direction of the incoming jet 
and y direction is taken as the direction perpendicular to that. Now that we know the mass flow rate and the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane, let us apply impulse momentum principle to calculate the impulsive force exerted by the jet on this wheel. So, the impulsive force along the x direction is given by rate of change of momentum along the x direction and as we have seen in the previous cases this can be written as mass flow rate multiplied by change, change in velocity along the x direction. We have just mentioned that the mass flow rate is given by rho a v and change in velocity along the x direction. The incoming velocity is the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the wave that is v r or v minus u along the positive x direction and the outgoing velocity is v r cos theta along the negative x direction which can be written as minus v r cos theta or minus v minus u into cos theta that is mass flow rate in this case is mass flow rate is rho a v change in velocity in the x direction this is the initial velocity v r or v minus u minus final velocity along the x direction that is v r cos theta along the negative x direction or minus v r cos theta or minus v minus u cos theta. That takes the form f x is equal to rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta which is the expression for the impact of jet along the x direction for this case. In a similar way for the y direction impulsive force along the y direction is f y which is equal to rate of change of momentum along the y direction and which can be written as mass flow rate into change in velocity along the y direction. Mass flow rate remains the same what is the mass which is striking the vane per unit time which is rho a v. Next we need to consider the change in velocity along the y direction. The incoming jet is purely along the x direction. So, its component along the y direction is 0 therefore incoming velocity along the y direction is 0. For the outgoing jet we need to consider this plus v r sin theta and this minus v r sin theta and these two gets cancelled and therefore this part also becomes 0 and that makes the force along the y direction f y equal to 0. That is when you have a series of curved vanes mounted on a wheel and if the jet is striking the vane at its center also assuming that the vanes to be smooth and frictionless. In this case the force exerted by the jet on the wheel is given by f x is equal to rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta and f y is equal to 0 where as we have seen in all the previous cases rho is the mass density of the fluid, a is the cross sectional area of the jet, so v is the velocity of the incoming jet and u is the tangential velocity of the wheel. We generally consider the angular velocity, this angular velocity can be converted into the corresponding tangential velocity which is u in this case and theta is the vane angle and also the x direction is taken as the direction of uh, the jet and y direction is the direction perpendicular to that. So, in this case also the force along the y direction is equal to 0. When we know the force that is acting on the vane and if you know the velocity of the vane, velocity which is the vane is moving in the tangential direction, we can calculate the work done by the jet on the wheel. Again along the x direction the work done is given by force into velocity of the vane in that direction that is f x into u which in this case is rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta multiplied by u and work done along the y direction since force is 0 in the y direction and the velocity component in the y direction is 0 f y into the velocity is also 0 and therefore work done along the y direction is also 0. This is the work done per unit time or the output power produced by the jet. 
Therefore, as a next step you can calculate the efficiency of the jet that is output power divided by input power. Input power as we have discussed in the previous case since this is a jet which is coming out from a nozzle which is open to atmosphere the only energy available to this jet is the kinetic energy which is half mv square or that can be represented as half rho a v cube and the output power developed in this case is rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta multiplied by u. So, this output power divided by input kinetic energy can be simplified as 2 u into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square. This can be obtained if you cancel the common terms in the numerator and denominator. Therefore, the efficiency of a jet when it impinges on a series of curved vein mounted on a wheel is given by 2 u into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square. As we have seen in the case of a single moving vein, this efficiency eta is a function of the tangential velocity of the wheel that is u velocity of the jet v and the vein angle theta. So, for a given vein and for a given jet when v and theta are constant the efficiency varies with the tangential velocity with which the vein is moving that is efficiency varies with u. So, what is the value of u which can give us the maximum efficiency in this case that can be determined if you take the first derivative of this efficiency expression with respect to u and equate that to 0 that is dou eta by dou u equal to 0. So, in this case you substitute the value of eta which gives you dou by dou u of the efficiency expression 2 u into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square is equal to 0. Again the same procedure since this being a partial derivative let us take the terms which are not a function of u outside the bracket that is 2 1 plus cos theta and v square these are the terms which are not a function of u. So, I can write it as 2 into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square these are the constant terms take these terms outside then find the partial derivative of the remaining terms that is dou by dou u of u into v minus u this should be equal to 0. Again in this case there are two functions first function is u the second function is v minus u you need to find the partial derivative of the product of two functions that can be done as first function into the derivative of the second function plus the second function into the derivative of the first function. So, applying this concept here I can rewrite this expression as first let me take the constant terms outside 1 plus cos theta divided by v square into this partial derivative. So, let me start with the first function first function in this case is u into derivative of the second function derivative of v minus u that is dou by dou u of v minus u is minus 1 plus second function second function is v minus u. So, v minus u into derivative of the first function that is derivative of u dou by dou u of u which is equal to 1 this should be equal to 0 that is what is written here. 2 into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square in u into minus 1 plus v minus u should be equal to 0. And there are two terms this is the first term and this is the second term. This term 2 into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square is 0 only if cos theta is equal to minus 1. For all other cases this is a positive value. So, this equation will be 0 when only this part is equal to 0 that is when minus u plus v minus u equal to 0 and we can simplify that to get this expression v minus 2 u equal to 0 or v equal to 2 u or u equal to v by 2. That means for the jet impinging on a series of curved vein the maximum efficiency can be attained when the tangential velocity of the vein v is equal to half of the 
jet velocity v. If we substitute v equal to 2u in the efficiency expression, we will get what is this maximum efficiency we are talking about. That is when you substitute v equal to 2u, 2u into 2u minus u into 1 plus cos theta divided by 2u square. This gives the expression maximum efficiency is equal to 1 plus cos theta divided by 2. Again the maximum efficiency is a function of theta and higher efficiencies can be attained by adjusting the value of theta. So, what is the maximum efficiency that can be attained and what is the corresponding value of theta? In this case the efficiency can be the maximum when cos theta is the maximum and the highest value possible for cos theta is 1 and that is when theta equal to 0 degree. And when cos theta equal to 1 this becomes 1 plus 1 divided by 2 that is 2 divided by 2 of 1 that is equal to 100 percent. That means when we use a series of curved vane instead of a single moving curved vane, if you use a series of curved vane mounted on a V and if the jet impinges the vane at its center, we can attain the maximum efficiency for a vane angle theta equal to 0 that is when we use hemispherical vane and theoretically this maximum efficiency can go up to 100 percent. That is when theta equal to 0 degree you are talking about the case of a hemispherical vane and theoretically the maximum efficiency can be 100 percent and this can be attained for a hemispherical vane when the tangential velocity u is half of the jet velocity v. But it is not possible to have uh, a hemispherical vane for practical application. We will see that later when we discuss the Pelton wheel in detail. So, for practical applications theta is kept as close to 0 as possible. Generally 0 to 15 degrees is maintained as the vane angle so that the maximum efficiency can be attained. Uh, this typically summarize what we have been discussing so far. If you have a jet of vane stri striking a stationary vane, the work done is 0 though the force exerted by the jet on the vane is not equal to 0. But if you have a moving vane, a vane moving with a velocity u in the same direction as that of the jet, if the jet strikes a single moving vane, the impulsive force exerted by the jet on the vane is given by rho a into v minus u whole square into 1 plus cos theta and the corresponding work done is given by f x into u that is rho a into v minus u whole square into 1 plus cos theta multiplied by u and we have also seen the expression for efficiency by dividing this output power uh, by the input kinetic energy. And in case of a single moving curved vane we have seen that the maximum efficiency is when the vane velocity u is one third of the jet velocity and when the jet angle theta is 0 and for all these combinations the maximum efficiency that can be attained is slightly less than 60 percentage. And when we replace the single curved vane with a series of curved vane mounted on a wheel, the impact of jet is given by rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta and the corresponding work done is given by rho a v into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta multiplied by u. Efficiency in this case is given by 2 u into v minus u into 1 plus cos theta divided by v square and this efficiency is maximum when the vane velocity tangential velocity of the wheel is half of the jet velocity and when the vane angle is 0. For that case theoretical efficiency can attain as high as 100 percent. The difference between a series of vanes and a single vane is that when we mount a series of vane on a V that is rotating, the jet always meet with the vane at the same position. The jet need not have to travel an additional distance to meet the vane. Therefore, the mass striking the vane per unit time is rho A into V which is the same as the mass that is flowing out of the nozzle per unit time. We will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.